Loud and Quiet presents Midnight Chats. You don't need me to tell you that if there's been one red hot topic that's dominated national and international politics the last few years, it's immigration. And post Brexit, post Trump, it continues to do so. So maybe it's surprising that more musicians haven't tackled the topic, the subject, in some way from some angle. But I guess it's one of those things that's still very divisive. However, uh, my guest on this episode of Midnight Chats has talked about it, has written about it, and it's Ghost Poet. Last month in April, he shared the first taste of new music from his fourth album that will be out later this year. It's an emotive and pretty arresting piece of storytelling called Immigrant Boogie, written from the perspective of a father, his wife and his children, in a desperate situation travelling on board an immigrant boat attempting to make a journey to a better quality of life something we've read a lot about and heard a lot about in the media the last few years. I'm happy if you want to pause this podcast and go check out the song and come back to us because for me it's a really powerful piece of songwriting and one which forms a large part of this conversation that you're about to hear, which was recorded when a barrow came into our office here at Loud and Quiet a couple of weeks back. Um, It also won't have escaped your notice that there's a general election just around the corner here in the UK too, so we talk about that as well. If you're thinking, oh, this episode sounds like it's going to be a bit heavy, um, it wasn't all, I promise. We also chatted about how he's recently moved out of his native London, got a place in Margate on the coast, um, like lots of other people in the creative industries have in the last few years, uh, where he's hatching plans to start his own online radio station. So we hear about his inspiration for wanting to do that. There's also a barking dog in the background of some of this, um, and we like to kind of keep that stuff in. I should say, in case you need any background on Ghost Poet, he's the British artist who was based in Coventry after studying there for almost a decade, and he's released three albums, two of which have been nominated for the prestigious Mercury Prize, including his most recent one, Shedding Skin, uh, back in 2015, I think it was, and he's also been a judge for that as well. In person, he's a really gracious guy, quite softly spoken, but very focused and, and humble. You'll hear me mention this in the podcast too, that right back at the start of Midnight Chats in the spring of last year, he helped us get this podcast up and running by writing some music for it, um, which we're still really grateful for. And that's kind of the ideal opportunity to say that if you do like what you hear, there are now more than 25 episodes to go back and listen to. Everyone from Ryan Adams to Laura Marlin, Riz Ahmed to Mac DeMarco. And last time out, Stuart was speaking to Slow Dive. So do subscribe. That means you'll get every new episode that goes up fortnightly on a Thursday at midnight. And if you want to leave us a review, rate us or comment, that all helps in spreading the word too. Anyway, I will leave you to this. I hope you enjoy our conversation. This is episode 27 of Midnight Chats with Ghost Poet. Before we kick off, I've got to say thank you to you because we've been doing this podcast for about 18 months now. We launched mm. it in the spring last year with um, an old battered laptop and a <laughs> microphone we bought off eBay. Didn't really know what we were doing. <laughs> and um, you kindly lent um, some music to us to really get our podcast off the ground. So oh, yeah. I in that respect. That. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so you've been there since the start in a way. So Indeed. thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Very How welcome. have you been anyway? Yeah, really good. Really good. Um just been you know pottering really pottering moved to margate about four or five months ago and um yeah i'm just all zen (laughs) zen zen life now have you lived in the city all your life and this is the kind of first move out of the big smoke in a sense um no i i I moved to coventry when i was like 18 um for university and then i stayed there for about 10 years or so in total and then moved back to London so London and Coventry so it wasn't totally alien for me to move out of London but yeah it feels like 
it's a different type of move. I think being in the sea is really good. Everything being so close where you could walk to everything in like 10, 15 minutes and bumping into people and having conversations a bit much like this. Mm. This like wholesome conversation where it isn't about how much you've been able to achieve in your in your life thus far. It's just like, how's things? Yeah, cool. What are you up to? Mm. It's nice. Yeah. Was it a mixture of like having enough of certain elements of living in a city like London and the appeal of having that little bit more kind of time and space? Was, mm. was it one more than the other? For sure. It was the desire to have a bit more space was, was starting to get stronger and stronger. And yeah, it was just like London, it's just very busy. And mentally it's very, for me, it was becoming very draining just because that's the way it's set up is the capital city and, you know, living here, you sign almost like a... <laughs> a contract to just constantly have be on attack mode, <laughs> you know, I'm constantly be in this kind of I've got to keep working. I've got to if I'm enjoying my life in any way, I'm gonna feel guilty about it. I I just didn't want to do that anymore. And I knew I was born here, I still love it, but um it was time to find another base of operations, you know. Yeah. So What are the things you're enjoying about Margate then? Being able to walk to everywhere is great. Um, the sea, obviously. Just making lots of new friends. and lots. There's a lot of artists, a lot of creatives down there. And there's lots of really interesting opportunities that come about from a place where, for a long time, it was there was hardly anything going on. Like The, the traditional kind of seaside um, industry was, was uh, unfortunately, was... Um, devastated by the introduction of like cheap flights abroad through like things like EasyJet and so on mm -hmm. and so forth um, so for a long time it was just on its knees so it slowly started to develop again and there's just opportunities I'm trying to start like I mentioned I'm trying to start um, like a radio station down there and just trying to give Margate a voice through music and give people an idea of what's going on down there in terms of the creative arts and so on and so forth really so yeah it's, it's quite an inspiring place I haven't I haven't actually made any music since I moved down there so I don't know what is going to come out from it mm. when I start making music again but I was going to say yeah. because when when often when you read about the things people say about the music that you make mm. a consistent reference that always pops up is this is the sound of the city it's mm. the urban sound <laughs> of night time mm. you know if i have to read that ghost poets new track sounds ideal for listening to on a night bus <laughs> then uh, do you know what i mean no, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a regular reference so Indeed. how do you um i guess you don't know yet but how do you imagine that that new scenery might sort of appear in your music i don't know i really really don't know i kind of I know I'm very much more, um, my mind is much more settled living in Margate now. And I feel like, I don't know if I could put like, I, I never think about it in general sense, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I, I assume that the music will come out much more relaxed and much more kind of scenic, which is not what I want. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of like, it's like, you could say the same about somebody like Nick Cave, not in terms of my music, but in terms of somebody who lives by the sea, lives in Brighton, and it hasn't seemed to affect his music. He still very much makes what he wants to make. So I don't think it will change dramatically, but I feel it will seep in there in some shape or form, mm. for sure. I just don't know how yet. It's almost like a fear. I think that's what's stopping me. I, I'm afraid to find out what will, will, how it will manifest itself in music. So I've just decided not to make any yeah. so yeah I'll come back to you and let you know how yeah. that one goes it's a familiar trend um, like not just from London but also like other big cities across the UK or even mm. places like New York whereby particularly people in the creative industries you know have moved further and further away from their sort of like con traditional heartlands within the city mm. um, what's it like being part of a sort of growing creative community in somewhere like Margate, like how have the sort of traditional Margate locals welcomed in, you know, I don't imagine they've had people coming along saying like, 
you know, having the enthusiasm to set up a radio station mm. or a club night or yeah. a, something a little bit more experimental? How, yeah. Is there any friction between those things? Not really. Not on the surface. There is definitely, you know, you've got um, people who have lived there for forever, you know, who may look at the, the new influx of people and think, this isn't what Margate needs. And there's stuff like Dreamland, which is a, a retro amusement park that's opening up again soon where it's going to be like a they're building like a 15,000 outdoor stage space and bars and stuff like that and I'm sure there's local people who think that's not what Margaret needs mm. um, so there's definitely that camp and then you've got a camp of people who are embracing it and there's a lot of the businesses that are being set up in Margate by people who have just moved down in the last four or five years are very much about trying to build a community and not kind of not to say it's only London specific but there is this kind of thing of going into an area and then almost just taking over and, and making it in your own image whatever that is mm. and I feel like the characters moving down to Margate and the people who have been there for a period of time very much understand that it's important to incorporate everybody within anything mm. um, and There's a sensitivity there then, for sure for sure yeah. and, it, and I think that's it's just down to the character type of people moving down there and it's like it's the general feeling of people that yeah there's a community spirit here this needs to be built on rather than created from scratch in some shape or form mm. so it's really excuse me it's really interesting to see yeah people local people and newer people being together in a club night or in a coffee shop and this like just you know just living beside each other and I think it's like it's like a social experiment really but <laughs> I really it's in, I'm enjoying seeing the developments you know so moving away from London has that been the kind of big life change the kind of significant stuff that's happened in the time since you released Shedding Skin since the last record I am um, what have I done I got married last year. Um, Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Like, I shouldn't really forget that. <laughs> but yeah, I, that happened last year. And I think for me, it's always kind of been a case of being inspired by this living, you know, rather than creative pursuits. So yeah, getting married was a, is a, is a life-changing thing. And making the move to Margate is another life-changing thing. And there's been, you know, ups and downs in between personally wise over the over the last couple of years. And all these things are just stored up basically for me. And once I start putting down music again, it just starts to come out in its own shape or form. But yeah, just like I, c I can't say it enough. I feel so much more relaxed about everything. And I feel it's good for me because mentally you can not that it affected my music so much but I just feel it's nice to be in a, a good mental state to just deal with everything that the music industry can throw at you you know mm. and I, I would say it's definitely been a couple of years of just of this life development really and it, obviously touring the last record which was good and it was really really well received which was nice but that kind of just pitted off and it, I was just living, you know, just trying to just be a good human being, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's been nice to have that time and, you know, um, I'm 34 now, so it's kind of like, as much as I am very much about the music, I'm just trying to think about other things and what else I can do with my life away from music, you know? Yeah. Let's talk about Immigrant Boogie because that was the mm. track that you shared in the middle of April. Mm. Um, tell me a little bit more about um, that song because it's 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 written from a first person perspective mm. on a topic presumably is that, that you've kind of like uh, has really resonated with you. So what made you want to write about that as a subject matter? Well, my music has always been about, I guess, social commentary and writing from uh, trying to write in the moment. And it was just something that was just, I was being bombarded with wherever I looked, be it, you know, visually on the television or, you know, stuff that I was reading. And it just felt like 
right to talk about it you know it's not kind of like it's been kind of <laughs> banded around as a kind of you know a strong political statement and it's not that it's kind of it's something that I felt was very much the zeitgeist of the time where it's, it's everyone's either talking about it or it's very much it's it's in it's people are aware of what's going on with immigration and the immigration um, crisis so it felt like the right kind of thing to write about really and I just kind of decided to do it as a song is it something that you feel um, like lyrically is sort of empathetic because it, it talks about the experience of somebody bringing you know their children and mm. being with their family and yeah. it's like very obviously extreme circumstance mm. is, is it in any sense like a kind of call to action you saying like this is still an important thing that we need to recognize or, and kind of just because it's not being reported in the headlines perhaps mm. as much as it has been like week to week it's still like a desperate situation mm. yeah for sure I wouldn't say it's a call for arms because throughout my career I've never I've never wanted to put my political views out there because I've always wanted to dis- I never wanted to alienate anybody. I just wanted, I wanted as many people as possible to hear my music and, and, and hopefully appreciate it. So it's not me chicken out, chicken, chickening out. It's more kind of a case of I wanted to write from the perspective of somebody in that situation, but almost kind of try to put the listener in their shoes and this question if if you were in their shoes, how would you react or how would you deal with the situation? And that's kind of what I've always tried to do. I guess with this, it's just a bit more maybe hard hitting and um, a bit more concentrated in subject matter when before, and, and still, <laughs> I kind of always have tried to never kind of stuck to one particular path. I may want to talk about a particular thing, but I'll link it to other things and connect it all within one song Mm -hmm. and with this it's one of the few I would say where I felt like I just want to focus on one particular thing and carry that through the whole song so yeah it's been interesting the reaction to it it's it's hard hitting which is what oh dog (laughs) it's yeah it's 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 immediate and that's what I wanted it to be I wanted it I didn't want to meander I wanted it to just hit the listener from, from the off. Did you have a image of a particular person that you were writing it in mind or was there a particular event that um, that like spurred you on to, to write about it? I just, uh, just in the news, just reading again and again and again about groups of people with inadequate equipment trying to get over either to here or into, you know, Italy or... Mm-hmm. Um, somewhere into Europe and it was this it it was almost getting to a point where it was just becoming so normal to this hear about another dinghy boat where hundreds of people have drowned or you know haven't survived because they were you know sold a dodgy boat and they were given um, fake life um, what do you call them well, like people trafficking that give you yeah sort of, you all know, that stuff and it was tell you a personality in another continent yeah exist. for sure and it was just like I just thought it was just it just really hit me I just thought this is this is crazy to think in 2017 or 2016 really when I wrote it where this is happening this is becoming normal you know and it just it wasn't like an immediate thing like, like I need to write about it but when I when it was the type the right time for me to sit down and write music it this was one of the things that this this came out you know and I just thought it just felt right to write about this and if nothing comes from it other than people just reminding themselves of this situation then that's good enough for me it's just kind of I just I just shocking and you see the images and the videos and like there was the the one small boy that was was found dead on the beach and that's like how how have we how have we let this happen as humans? You know how, how is this possible? So it's just yeah, that's where it kind of stems from. You know, it was interesting, wasn't it, that it took something uh, so that that was in I think um, twenty fifteen. Yes, it, it kind of took. Yeah. That was the the three year old Syrian boy mm-hmm. who was the photograph of him kind of washed up on a 
beach in Turkey. Horrible, absolutely yeah. horrible. But what did you think about the fact that it took something that kind of explicit and extreme for it to make it onto the front page of some oh, newspapers? I don't know. I can't. I can't talk for the media. Mm. <laughs> I guess it, it just felt. It felt like it was um, extreme enough, I guess, for it to make the front pages, maybe. Um, it shouldn't have taken something like that to happen for it to become major news, but the news works in in its own way, you know. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just sad, you know. It's just really sad. And, yeah, it just felt like, especially nowadays where... I just again <laughs> I've always just been very stubborn in that respect that I've always tried to go against what seems to be the norm and I'm just sick and tired of it. it's just the same old shit where it's like not not everyone at all and you, you, you could even just say it's a section of the music coming out of studios but it's just so much of this kind of like everything's fine you know it's all good let's go and have a good time and it's like no, it's not. It's not. And it's not me, you know, banging a drum and, you know, going political. But it's just a case of things are going to shit. <laughs> mm. And I, I don't know if it was Nina Simone or somebody said that, you know, it's the, it's the role. Of, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but it's like the role of an artist is to, is to write about the times. Mm. And it just felt like my duty to do that, you know, in my own little way. And... I think I'd be cheating myself by not doing that, you know. Mm. So it just it just felt right. It was interesting to hear you say that because I was going to ask about how there were lots of people that felt very discouraged by um, the state of things just because of the sort of tumultuous politics of the last like eighteen months or whatever. Mm. Those people that were you know wanted to understandably kind of put a you know try and you know chin up etc always mm. like well in times of like strife you know great art gets made mm. and um i suppose that is you know they were maybe taking that as a bit of a consolation but mm. do you think that's true and do you think that um i mean it sounds to me like you, you kind of like take a responsibility to kind of reflect the times mm. but is it an artist's responsibility to vocalize that stuff do you think there's different schools of thought isn't it it's like i on one hand, I feel, no, it isn't, you know, it isn't a responsibility of an artist to, dog again, I like dogs, so, great noise. <laughs> Sounds like a friendly dog. Yeah. Um, yeah, on one hand, I feel like it isn't the responsibility of an artist to, an artist should write what the fuck they want to write, that's that's one, That's I, fi- I wake up and think like that one day, on, on some days, and other days, I feel like, we should write about, the times I feel it's important to as always I always feel it's important to write your own unique story and stories but how can I just don't get how and again I always get myself in trouble by talking like this I'm not saying any particular the dog agrees I'm not particular particularly saying that you know your shit as an artist because you don't do this but I feel like how can you not use the advantage of having a mouthpiece you know opportunity to air your views or share your thoughts or whatever and not take that and just go down the what I would call the easy route of just writing about you know partying or you know going to the club going to the club or you know lovey dovey stuff it's cool you know love's great but I just feel like there's things to talk about now and I feel I personally want to go down that route route. I I always have I just for once decided to just make make music that was a bit more concentrated yeah I, I do my own thing I always have and everyone has to do their own thing and I'm never going to turn around and be like dismissive of an artist who has the balls to put music out there whatever it is and you know go through go through what it takes to get music out there nowadays but I just feel I'm leaning more towards the idea that you should 
you should say something, you know. It, again, this doesn't have to be political, but mm. it's important to, yeah, say something of substance, you know, as much as you can, or as much as you feel comfortable doing, you know. When we go into a period now whereby, you know, we're into that election period and the mm. news is full of kind of um, every twist and turn of, of campaigning in the run-up to something like that, mm -hmm. are you the kind of person that engages, like wants to know every kind of minute-by-minute -minute update in, in the run-up to something like a general election mm. or, or are you somebody who needs to take a step back it's very draining trying to keep up to it on a day-to-day -day basis i go through periods of this listening to talk radio like lbc and it's it's just draining <laughs> so draining hearing the difference of opinion and the bickering and the back and forth and this is happening because you know the part last party in power did that and you know we're gonna do this and you know it's like oh, I, I don't know, maybe it's idealistic but I just want it I just want peace mm -hmm. I just want peace and I want I want people to be treated fairly and everyone to have opportunities to better their lives it's really simple mm. for me and um yeah it is really draining so I once I knew the election was announced, I kind of was just like, yeah, I'm going to have to step back from this because I get too wound up about it. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like, yeah, I just, I just feel like I've got to just live my life and not, not be ignorant about it, but and I am very much aware of what's going on and keeping abreast, but not as, as, not as in depth, not as much as I would I would in the past. I think in the last few years I've decided this to, yeah, be zen, <laughs> be zen as much as possible. You know, sounds like a wise approach. Going back to the, talking about you know discussing your art and the, the kind of like um, the, the responsibility that you feel about wanting to kind of reflect the times that we live in. Mm. On immigrant boogie, you've you've got one of the guys from Shame who, if people yeah don't, Charlie don't, yeah. Charlie from Shame. Mm. Um, if, if people haven't come across that band, they're a band from South London. Mm. Um, released a few tracks, but have kind of got an album in the in the pipeline. Mm. Um, relatively kind of like new to a lot of people. Yeah, they're they're a young band with a political voice, like, mm. and, and they're kind of they're very they're very open about their kind of views and things like that. So was, they are. was that an attraction to like finding mm. discovering that band? Not really. I kind of I I must have been on uh, Steve Lamax round table. On Six Music, and he must have played um, whatever their first single was, Gold Hole, I think. And I just was, it's one of those moments where you're just like, What the hell is that? And he was like, Oh, it's this band called Shane, blah blah. And I was just like, Okay, cool. And I just kind of was just playing that for, to death, really. And once I wanted to make some music and I started, I made this, I just thought it'd be great to have him on it, just kind of as an ominous kind of voice in the, in the background. Because I love his, I love his tone. I love his voice. We got in contact, and he was really up for it. He's really, um, he's really, this. He's like, I think like seventeen, eighteen, or something like that. It made me feel very old. Um, and he, he's just full of ideas, and just like you know, there's so many things he wants to do with the band and with music in general. And it was just fascinating, just conversing with him. Mm. So yeah, it was really nice to get him involved in this track, and um, I like working with interesting artists. Simple as that, and I just found him interesting. Luckily, you know, he, he wanted to get involved. When we were talking earlier about uh, the inspiration of writing about the kind of like the what's happening in the news and the national conversation around you know issues, be it immigration or whatever, do you ever feel any kind of like trepidation about writing about those kind of things? Because as we've already discussed, some people kind of avoid those type of subjects mm. completely so you know on the eve of putting out something like um immigrant boogie mm. do you think what what is your thought process about how people might receive it and do, i mean people are i assume kind of sometimes worried about writing those kind of subjects because they're a fear of a backlash mm. but i think a lot of people appreciate honesty so have you ever had a backlash when you've written about a subject matter like that no i just feel like um I kind of I I wrote it purposefully that it wasn't taking a side, and I'm not taking a side. I'm just trying to shine a light on this particular subject. So I felt like 
that would help the cause in a sense of not trying, like I mentioned previously, alienating people by saying, right, this is wrong or this is right and blah, blah, blah. I just felt like I just want, I just want to shine a light on this. Um, and I didn't really have a full process. I never really do with making music. I never did in the beginning and I've just tried to keep that alive over the, over the last six, seven years I've been doing it where I just make what I want really and I've been very lucky in the, rese- in, in the sense that I've been able to, I've been given the time to be able to shape my sound or not even sound but like the direction I wanted to go in musically so I don't feel anyone would really not from the reactions thus far I don't think anyone's totally shocked by what I've written you know because I've always just tried to be truthful so yeah I've never really had backlash and even if I did I wouldn't really care in the sense of I've just got to make what I want to make you know the moment I start to overthink it and start to think what's this particular person going to think or you know this audience in this country or you know that particular press person or whatever then I'm just gonna I'm gonna lose something you know I'm gonna lose what I feel makes me me and I never want to do that so I kind of just do my own thing and you know seek my own counsel you know yeah Yeah. I wanted to ask about music discovery because like Mm. throughout your career the three albums you've put out to date Mm. and uh, you know we've already mentioned that you've got um, Charlie on on Immigrant Boogie mm. you've you've been somebody who's always kind of like I guess shared the microphone with other artists that you mm. really admire mm. you've done radio shows on um, Soho Radio mm. and you, you, you've kind of always been quite passionate about wanting to share the other music that you discover so mm. how do you discover new music where are your kind of like trusted sources where do you where do you find the stuff that you go on to love um, everywhere through the power of Shazam. Okay. <laughs> what Shazam was the last is thing very Shazam? powerful. Um, <laughs> oh God, it's on my phone, which is currently charging, and it's off. Um, <laughs> some kind of obscure jazz thing that I, I heard on like Worldwide FM, like Jazz Peterson's station. Um, That's a great yeah, radio station. It's right? really That's good, it. and like through like researching stuff for my own station, I want to start. I've been listening to like. Worldwide FM, uh, Red Light Radio in Amsterdam, Delot Radio in New York, um, Berlin Community Radio, Soho Radio, Six Music. And so it's, it's stations, like the ones mentioned, and just, just living and going everywhere and just literally hearing something, either asking what the hell is that or shazamming. And then I just literally just compile stuff and I also get sent a few things and if I jump on a radio station like Six Music or whatever I'll say oh what's that who's who's, who you been listening to and it's kind of a combination of these things really I just kind of feel like there is so much about especially nowadays trying to you know I'm releasing a single I'm releasing an album so it's really important that everything is focused on me but it's like unless you're a superstar there's so much music out there it's impossible to do that for longer than maybe a week or two if you're lucky so I'm a massive fan of music I was a fan of music way before making my own and I don't feel the need to change in the sense of promoting other people if I hear something new or you know someone young or old I have no hesitation to just talk about it you know or Put it on a radio show or just put a link on a social media yeah. post. Why not? You know, music is should be about discovery, not just keeping everyone in your own little, you know, part of the world. I just think it's important to discover as much as you can. Really, there's so much music. How can you just? How can you not do that? It's weird to not want to do that. So I just keep doing it. You know. And your vision for starting your own radio station? Yeah. Um, those places you've just mentioned all doing fantastic things mm. individual global things that's the beauty of being able to start like an online radio station sure. you can listen to a New York radio station mm-hmm. you know, 
and see, and see what they're playing or whatever. Yeah. What's your vision for it? Will it have a focus on the talent and the sounds of the the, the local area, or will it, will it have a real kind of like broad offering? What, what, in your kind of mind's eye, what would be the the absolute perfect scenario with with starting like your own radio um, station? It's a combination of the two. I want to I want to focus on local artists musically. But it's kind of a case of I want to create a station that isn't only just music, it's also discussion and talking about, you know, social um social stuff and um I don't know, whatever whatever people wanna talk about. I wanna create a platform for that, mm -hmm. as well as new music, as well as potentially visiting DJs and, and artists. I wanna do literal stuff, I wanna record just like talks and someone's bringing out a book and record them talking about the book, reading from the book or what well, this, I kind of like a smorg smorgasbord. I love, I've never used that word in, <laughs> a, in a conversation, word, <laughs> kind of a smorgasbord of sorts. And yeah, so like art, culture, music, discussion, that's what I want it to be. It is great that with online radio, you can reach a, a, a much wider audience than a, you know, an FM dial. And I do want it to be global, but I want it to be very much a case of a reflection of Margate and the characters that make up Margate, but also this quality output in the creative creative sense of like I said, art, culture, discussion. Um that's that's the that's the plan. Yeah. We'll see how it goes, really. But yeah, that's the plan. When you're an independent artist and you're on the verge of making your fourth album you've been doing this probably approaching a decade so like is it hard sometimes is it is it a tough journey to 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 reach this kind of point because uh, you know all we see is the kind of the creative output and mm. see you on stage and everything else but behind the scenes doing it yourself for this period of time is it a tough journey um yeah it is and it and it has um luckily it's been more um positive than negative but it's um there's a number of things i guess it's kind of being a, a solo artist is um it's it's a lonely place you know you've got a kind of um you don't have band members to bounce ideas off so to speak or you know discuss or you know learn from so that was has always been interesting and because of the kind of music that i make it's not totally unique but it there's not many people I can just call up and say, oh, well, you know, we make similar things. Mm. How would you do, go about doing this or doing that? So it was, I've, there's been a lot of learning as I've gone, gone along and still learning. And being independent and, and trying to make music that isn't just this pop shit where it's just like, you know, just easy to list, easy to digest, has its own, you know, it's it's been a it's been a longer journey you know the journey still continues but it's i know i knew from the beginning that it would be a longer road for me because i wanted i didn't want to make this boring pop shit <laughs> and not to say pop music is shit you know harry styles sound of the times is not bad <laughs> you know i've been bombarded with that song and it's not too bad but you know, it's not. It wasn't the road. It wasn't the road I was going to go down. So I knew it was going to be trickier. I've just been really lucky that I've been, you know, been on, was on Brownswood for Brownswood recordings for the first record, mm -hmm. and they let me do what I wanted to do. And I've been with PS Recordings, played against Sam for the last two records, and again they've just let me do what I want to do. You know, and they've allowed me to grow and I think that was really important for me yeah I wouldn't want it any other way I think I think being an in, on, on the indie label and an independent artist whatever that means these days it's kind of it's always it's it's nice to just be in, have that creative freedom and just being able to make whatever I want to make and having way more control over the visual aspects and the artwork and so on and so forth it's what I've always tried to do it's always the longer road and yeah I, I'm not going to be chilling with Richard Branson on, on, a, on a private island anytime soon but I can look back at what I've made and say that I've made things that I really wanted to make there's nothing that I can I, I regret making at all and that is a success for me that's that's what I see as a success this 
being able to look back at my catalog and say, yeah, there's no regrets in there, you know? So, yeah, so far, so good. <laughs> Midnight Chats is a loud and quiet podcast. Production by Emma Snook. Music courtesy of Gold Panda. Search Midnight Chats on iTunes for more episodes and to subscribe. For more information, visit loudandquiet.com.